PKS 1202102 is the name given to a quasar in the Virgo constellation, believed to be located some 3.5 billion light years away, if you believe the redshift values correlate to only distance. Now what makes this quasar so special? Scientists believe that at the heart of this quasar are two supermassive black holes which are spiraling in on each other. Now does this doomsday quasar signal the end of everything? Let's step away from the melodrama just a little. This quasar is one of only a handful where scientists believe that there may be a binary black hole within the accretion disk. They claim that this quasar is in the final phase of the merging process. They believe that this could help them predict what the final stages of a black hole merger might look like and show how long this process might actually take. This is what they call the final parsec problem and is yet unsolved as all theoretical models fail to explain this process. Now using the Catalina real-time transient survey, they were able to detect a strong, smooth periodic signal in the optical and infrared light. The periodic signal was something that they had not seen before in quasars and they suggested that this indicated that there must be a binary pair of black holes. And they observed that this periodicity was the same across all wavelengths. The signal seemed to indicate a five-year periodicity based on 20 years of data. Now, as they believe that this object is so remote due to the redshift value, they think that the merger has already happened. In fact, they think that it happened 3.39 billion years ago. But don't worry, it will take a further 100 million years for the light from this event to reach us. Is there another explanation for this periodicity? Now, firstly, this quasar, I believe, is not at the vast distance that they claim. Also, as with many other quasars, it is located very near a pair of host elliptical galaxies. And this does remind me of Arp's work on quasars and his idea that they were formed via the nearby galaxies. More important is the idea of the periodicity of the quasar. To me, the idea of two spinning black holes to account for the periodicity is just a little too far-fetched, ignoring how far-fetched I believe that black holes are. So is there a more reasonable explanation? Once again, I am drawn to Eric Lerner's model of the quasar. And I know I still need to finish that video and that will be done soon. But his idea is that a plasmoid forms these types of structures, so quasars, and they form from a collapsing plasma cloud and this infalling plasma forms filaments with very strong magnetic fields. And the structure essentially stores and compresses the magnetic energy of the entire cloud in a much smaller footprint. The plasmoid itself is many times larger than the part that we actually see. No black holes are required to run this. And the compressed magnetic energy is released by the plasmoid in the form of two beams at the heart of the object, which would emit synchrotron radiation. More interesting is that in Eric's lab experiments, he discovered that the plasmoid did not produce a continuous beam of particles, but that it pulsed as the energy was released from twisted filament pairs at a time. When he scaled this up to the size of a galaxy, he ended up with a pulsing time frame in the order of magnitude of several years. And this is exactly what we are seeing here. The power output would vary as each pulse sequence started and ended. No need for black holes and no need for binary pairs of black holes. And yet we can explain the reason for the periodicity. Now, I think that this is very strong confirmation of Eric Lerner's model. More work needs to go into it. We need to look at more examples of these quasars. But to me, this is certainly pointing towards uh, a, a quasar being a, a pulsed beam, as in Eric Lerner's model. 
As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.